here with a man who's been on our show before, um, but I just recently heard that he used to walk past my old office in LA every day. It's Preppy Kitchen author, John Cannell. Hi, John. Hi. Is this true? So it's true. My very first job out of college, I was tenting in an office, and your production company's offices were right on the same floor, and I'd walk by every day, think, hmm, I wonder if Drew's there. Is it was, this the one on Sunset or Santa yeah, Monica? Yeah, it was you, Pat Boone, and then I was the next one over. Yes. And now, I can't believe all these years later, here I am. Well, we're oh, collaborating on the yeah, show. In yeah. fact, you guys ready? Yeah. Because yeah. it's time for food news. Ooh. Mm. 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 Okay, your story, John. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. This one's pretty cool because I know you're a halloumi head. So, <laughs> MASH reports that researchers recently found a 2,600-year-old piece of halloumi cheese, what? and it's, got, it's cows and goat milk together, but this was buried along with a mummy, and the thought is that in the afterlife, you wake up, and what do you want? A snack. Snack, <laughs> so right? This was for the mummy, but it's not the oldest cheese ever. That goes to a 3,600-year-old piece of cheese that was dis discovered in 2018. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Turns out charcuterie was in even back then, right. you know. <laughs> but have you ever done it? Do you, do you ever do this in the fridge when you find a piece of cheese and you can just like, like, oh, I'll cut the bad part off. It's still yes. good, right? I mean, can you do that after 2,600 years? It's called being sustainable. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ross, what would you be buried with? Uh... Oh, I, honestly, I would say cheese, like Parmesan. I mean, I love a, just Parmesan. Parmesan. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah. John, what would you be buried with? I want a really gooey brie. Well, if we're going to go cheese. That's not going to age super great, John. I'm just saying. <laughs> it is wrapped in, it's got a casing. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. the farm doesn't last forever either. <laughs> True. I feel like just stick me in the vending machine and we'll, we're good to go. That's what you okay. be. <laughs> All right. Now... <laughs> You know that Queen Elizabeth left a lasting legacy all around the world for nearly a hundred years. And according to Metro UK, that also includes a killer pancake recipe. So a copy of the Queen's instructions for her drop scones, which is a thicker, fluffier version of a flapjack, recently surfaced on Reddit because apparently Her Majesty personally sent the recipe to U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower after he visited her in 1960. Oh, really? And here it is. So if you go to our Instagram, you're going to get the recipe of the Queen's drop scones, um, and we made them here today. Ooh. Yeah. They look but... amazing. I just want to say... Cake is a bit of a stretch. Look, this is a biscuit, right? Look at that. That's thick. Yeah. Oh my god. Is it god. good? Okay, I'm gonna try it. Oh my god, you guys. Whoa. It's almost like a biscuit yeah. and a like this is Dominic Ansel level cronut. It's like a fritter. Yeah. It's like a pancake and a and a, a biscuit. Yeah, it's not a pancake, but that queen, she knew how to make a biscuit. This, this is, is delicious. Good. Oh god. Mm. Well, oh my God, you guys, you guys have to try this recipe. I've never mm -hmm. had anything like it. It is a hybrid yeah. and it's incredible. It's a slightly funnel cakey as well. It is. Too, right? yeah, I think it's fried. It's like so tender.